let's go back to, okay, so we covered kidney function improves fatty liver disease. So many people seem to be suffering fatty liver disease yes. and yep. a non, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. These yes. people aren't alcohol drinkers. What's happening there? What's the mechanism? And how is it that their liver function is improving yeah. on the low carbohydrate diet? Thank you. That's such an important point. So we were talking before about insulin. So insulin has the vital job of reducing blood sugar because the high blood sugar damages your arteries. So the question is, where does that sugar go? So insulin has to get rid of sugar and it does this by pushing the sugar inside your cells. So it pushes the sugar inside your muscles for energy to run around. But what if you eat more Mars bars and rice cakes or whatever, then you need to run around. What happens to that extra sugar? Some of it gets pushed into your belly fat to give you a bigger tummy and middle-aged spread. But the rest gets pushed into your liver. And the only thing the liver can do with that sugar is turn it into a fat called triglyceride. And so uh, we now have a situation where a quarter of the developed world, a quarter of everybody we know um, in the developed world has non-alcoholic fatty liver. So this is, it's not that they're alcoholics. It's just that they're having more carbohydrate than their body can cope with. And the liver is turning this sugar into fat. And that's why it's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And the reason it's called disease is the fat in the liver starts interfering with the good work of insulin. And uh, Roy Taylor talks about the long silent scream from the liver of about 10 years. And that's because fatty liver is leading into diabetes, type 2 diabetes. So people have fatty liver usually before they have type 2 diabetes. And so it is something that we should worry about, we should do something about. But I hope you can understand from what I've explained that all of this wonderfully is reversible and rapidly so. So if you cut back on the carbohydrate, then your body uses up the fat that was in your liver, can burn it, and I've known fatty liver uh, reverse easily within two months regularly and liver function to really improve. And I think what's worrying, and I, I love Robert Lustig's work on this. Have you managed to ask him on your podcast yet? Have you had him? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, let's, we live in hope. I will. I will yeah, insha inshallah for that one. Um, because he, of course, is distressed because we now have children with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Mm -hmm because of the uh, amount of particularly sugar-sweetened beverages. And so this is an international crisis that our children, and the youngest I've seen type 2 diabetes is in a 12-year-old. And that is a, a catastrophe and very serious. And, and so fatty liver disease, uh, you're right to ask about it. There isn't nearly enough curiosity about fatty liver disease and not nearly enough action. Um, and and I think a lot of doctors keep hoping there'll be a drug to solve it. And yet, of course, the reason is we're all having too much junk food, too much carbohydrate and sugar. And if we ate, so fatty liver disease was rare. Diabetes was rare 50 years ago, incredibly rare. And if only we'd go back to eating less snacking, eating less often, eating less in quantity and more in quality, um, so many of these chronic diseases do not have to happen and they shouldn't happen. And I think thinking about children gives this a real um, focus and impetus that we must do something uh, for the younger generation. And it's another one of the things that keeps me going. 